got some magic potion or vulgar isopod, want to know how to look after them, then this is the video for you. Hello everyone, I'm David and welcome back to Spoodopods. Today is the first of my isopod care guides. I'm going to be looking at Armadillidium vulgare, and that includes the orange variants, the magic potion variants, all the many variants of this type of isopod. And I'm going to go into every aspect of looking after them. And to be honest, they're one of the easier ones to look after. I'm going to be using my own experiences as well as some research I've done other experiences of other people I've spoken to, to try and give you a nice comprehensive guide in bite-sized form. If you like this kind of content or want to see loads of other guides on various types of isopods and other inverts, then please feel free to subscribe, like, comment, etc. It all helps the channel. Let's start off with a brief general description of Armadillidium vulgare, which is quite a mouthful, but Latin names can't tend to be kind of important. You can find them in all parts of the world, mostly across Europe and towards um, Asia and Russia. However, there are many different types and morphs of them. I mean, I really like magic potions, as you probably tell, because I have them. There's also the orange morphs and many other sort of very various colour variations. The name, Latin name, actually means little armoured one, which is kind of cute. And they are generally quite hardy species and they have some specific requirements that you need to be aware of. One of the reasons I quite like these guys as pets is they're quite active as well and during the day, if you provide them a feeding dish at the front, for example, which I'll talk about later, you will see them going up to it and moving around. You'll also see them sort of exploring their enclosure and that makes them quite a nice pet and quite interesting to have, especially if you're a beginner to isopods because they're quite hardy and they will sort of um, adapt to any sort of mistakes you make at the start. Now, these little vulgares do need a specific sort of setup when you're setting up their enclosure. It is best, as usual, to provide them an adequately sized enclosure, dependent on whether you want them to breed or not. If you give them a slightly larger enclosure for a small colony, they'll take longer to breed. If you give them a slightly smaller enclosure for a small colony, they will breed quicker. I learned that from Aquarimax Pets, that's a very useful fact, very interesting. So generally, once you've got your enclosure, you want to give them lots of substrate. Now these guys do like to borrow, so you want to give them a decent depth of substrate. Generally, we're talking about mm, between five and eight centimeters minimum. That'll give them plenty in there. You also want to provide them hides. You want to provide them some enrichment to crawl over. I like nice fiend enclosures because it doesn't bother them and they still love crawling all over them. It's lots of fun for them. Do give them some cork bark as well and also give them lots of leaf litter. Even if you go for a fiend enclosure and you take some lovely photos at the start, make sure there's plenty of leaf litter because almost all isopods benefit from this and enjoy it crawling around and eating it. Make sure at one end of the enclosure you also have some moss which can retain some humidity and moisture which will be important for our next point. Now, if you're familiar with isopods, you'll know that many of them will need a moisture gradient, which basically means a level of moisture on one level, and then it declines or increases depending on what side you go on. I found with my vulgares, they like a fairly steep moisture gradient. So on one side of the enclosure with the moss, I will keep it very damp with the substrate, and then that will generally decrease as it goes to the other side. I try to keep at least, at least a little bit of moisture in all the substrate to make it easier for them to borrow, but they do like to have a drier side and a wetter side and it's very important to provide this for them so they can moisturize themselves that's how they get their moisture but aside they can go on to dry and also if they want to they can go on the cork bark to avoid moisture and just relax on if they want to make sure you keep an eye on this moisture and you don't let it dry out too much because that could be harmful to them and you could lose members of your colony now you may want to know what they eat food wise it's fairly simple they will eat the dead leaves you're providing their leaf litter they will eat some of the substrate material as well if you've got a nice sort of bioactive substrate. You can also provide them a bit of veg or fruit. They really appreciate that. Mine will always just go straight over to that. And I've got a little feeding bowl in my setup as well where I will sometimes supplement their diet with fish food, which could be flakes or pellets. They also really enjoy this. Do keep in mind that you may not want to provide this too often because you want them to eat other stuff and you can get fungus gnats as a pest, but in the substrate, they will eat them if you don't feed them extras too much because that's one of their primary diet items. The next thing I want to talk about before I go on to my last point, which is extras, is ventilation. Make sure you've got plenty of ventilation. Cross ventilation is generally best where you have holes on either side. They do benefit from it, I've found, and it also helps to keep the humidity at a decent level, but also not dry out too quickly. You, know, you need some airflow in most habitats because it is better for them and generally it's going to be better for you because when you, that way when you open the door it's not going to be horribly stinky. So do make sure there's some cross ventilation in there as well. 
With regards to extras to have in your isopod setup, I would recommend springtails first of all. Springtails get on very well with vulgar isopods and they're also very useful for cleaning up any issues you have in your habitat. That could be mold, that could be your isopod droppings, that could be anything else that crops up. So I'd highly recommend adding springtails in there. And that's also why I like to maintain at least a little bit of moisture all across because they need the moisture to survive. You don't even need water bowls or anything like that. The moisture in the soil will be perfectly adequate. You can add some extra scenery, you can have some theming in there if you want to, that's always lots of fun. You can provide a feeding dish, I like to have that at the front, mostly because it encourages the isopods to come to the front and eat there and it's quite entertaining to watch them. Anything else you can think of you're happy to add, like scenery wise, um, extras wise, that's all up to you. My last point when you're talking about your isopods is do keep an eye on them. I find that with most husbandry for most animals it's about observation and adaptation and also doing your research obviously like watching videos like this but you observe your own isopods see how they behave see how they react and the more you do this the more you will know what your colony needs what your colony likes if you want to encourage breeding like i mentioned earlier make sure you provide a bit of extra protein and food and make sure that space is a little bit more limited but generally i find that it's better for them if they have plenty of space even if breeding takes a little bit longer so guys, that's it. That's my first guide on isopods. I hope you found it useful and entertaining. Any questions, comments, or suggestions, happy to hear from you down below. But in the meantime, from me and my isopod colonies, take care and see you later.